What's up guys? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'm going to show you how to track an explosion into a moving scene. And um, this is great. I'm excited. I just moved to this place in Los Angeles, by the way. So I'm using a bar stool and a trash can as my setup. And I think that makes me resourceful. Okay. Let's cut to the chase. I'm going to show you how to make this explosion animation, blending in the light flashes, the actual distortion in the air from heat, along with how to just track an explosion into a moving scene. I recently did work for Apex Legends, which I loved. Did pretty well on Twitter for them too. And now I'm gonna show you how I did it. First off, let's start with the footage. So I have it here in Adobe Premiere. I'm just walking down the street and I have my friend off camera throw a trash can at me. Because if there's explosions in a scene, it kind of makes it more believable if stuff is actually flying at me. So I always try and add a practical element. And now once we have our footage, let's open it up in After Effects. And first things first, and probably the easiest part is just tracking the original footage. If you come to the right, select track or panel and hit track camera. You can sit back, relax, grab a coffee, and just let it analyze and track the scene for yourself. By the way, it helps if the scene is shot on a stabilizer and your shutter speed is really high, which my footage was. And now when it's done solving, you'll see all these little colorful dots, which means you have a lot of good tracking data to choose from. If you just grab your cursor and kind of select and draw a circle around a bunch of points, it will select one that's good. You're gonna wanna find one that's like flat against the ground, one of these targets. And if you right click, hit create camera and solid. Now this is important. Where this solid is, is where the explosions are going to be. So if it's laying flat against the ground, that's what the explosions are gonna be. So we are going to reposition this blue solid we've created to rotate in 3D space until it's facing the camera. Because where the blue solid is, is where the explosions are going to be. And we want the explosions facing the camera. And now if we watch the footage back, after repositioning it to face the camera, the track looks pretty good on this one. I'm happy with that. I can see the explosions being tracked right there, just in my mind. Bottom line, good track. Next, and this is the most important part, so listen closely. Let's right click on this blue solid that we've just created. The thing we've been working on, we're gonna right click, hit pre-compose, and you have to hit the top circle. Check that top circle and rename this explosion track. Let's be responsible and come down to it in the layers panel and let's change the label to orange and you know, do the whole renaming thing. Organization rocks. And so now it's the fun part. If we go into this explosion composition and delete the blue solid, anything we put into this pre-composition will be tracked into the original scene. So we got this explosion inside the composition and here it is in the original scene, but you might ask, Will, it's cropped. This doesn't look right. Well, you're right. But because we put this in a pre-composition, we can just change the sequence settings of the pre-composition. So let's hop into explosion track. And if we come up to composition, composition settings, and we just change the width and height to 5,000, hit okay. We have all the space in the world to put whatever explosions we want. And if we look at the main original scene, you can see now the explosion is not restricted by any bounds of a composition. That was my theatrical way of saying, Let's just put a bunch of explosions in here now. The whole goal in my process is to just reposition and scale the explosions in the pre-comp and just look at the main track and kind of just look at both until everything is lined up. And by the way, I'm getting these explosions that you're seeing from footagecrate.com. Not a sponsor, they just have the best free and paid for fire asset, in my opinion. And now that I'm happy with the explosions and sparks tracked into my original scene, we wanna blend them in a little more to look like they were actually in that scene. We don't want them to look like these green screen assets that are just dropped in. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and then grab the pin tool and create a mask around the explosion. I will grab the curves effect and put it on the adjustment layer and just create a yellow color. Mm -mm. I will feather this mask so the light is properly blended into the scene and I will keyframe the mask path feather and opacity to recreate light flashes. So basically as the scene is going, I'm animating this curves adjustment layer to come in and out where the explosions are. What's great is that you can just use the same adjustment layer for every mask where an explosion is just by using the pin tool. You can have a million masks on one adjustment layer. You just have to remember to be keyframing in and out the opacity of each mask. That's how you create the light flashes effect. And so now we just kind of animate these masks 
throughout the scene as the explosions come in and out. And now that we have recreated the light shooting out of the explosions, we can work on the heat distortion. I'm using heat distortion, which is a plugin from Video Copilot, but you can also use turbulent displacement if you would like. So if you create a new adjustment layer and you look up the heat distortion effect and drop it onto this layer, just like the light, just like what we did in the last little scene, we'll get the pin tool and create masks around where the explosions were and we will feather the edges so the heat distortion is properly blended into the scene. And again, we're using the pin tool with these adjustment layers so we're only having the heat distortion in the light only where the explosions are. And so now that we've keyframed the heat distortion to be around where the explosions are, we now have light recreated, we now have the air distortion recreated, and we have the explosions tracked into the scene. And bam, I think that looks pretty good. Here's the actual shot I did for Apex Legends. It's pretty simple. Once you have a pre-compose that's tracked into the scene, you can put anything in there, and from there, blending it into the scene with adjustment layers is easy. So don't let 3D tracking make you think something's hard. It actually makes something pretty easy. It turns into a drag and drop project. <sighs> oh, and the final touches are just uh, color correction, like the overall color correction. I brought this into Premiere already, and I already did some color correction. And so once you drop that on top of your animation, it just blends everything in together under one color. God, I feel like I don't have to make it so dramatic, but I do anyway. But essentially creating a universal color scheme for all of it just blends it in even more. And that's the final touch. Well, sound design is, but I really don't want to go into that. That's very subjective. But you know it's not subjective. How amazing my sponsor is. Squarespace. So now that it's 2021, Squarespace has so much to offer the world. And let me start with members only content. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send them email communications, and leverage your audience insights all on one easy to use platform. And the next, I love this one the most because I'm an artist myself, but their portfolio options. They have award winning designer templates that you can use to up upload your videography or your photography to, to display it to the world in a professional and sleek fashion because they have portfolios within these designer templates. Listen, it's a good idea to put your work on Squarespace because even if your work's good, Squarespace will make it look better or at least well displayed. Next, we all have social medias. You probably have some. Uh, you're watching mine. Well, Squarespace has the ability to let you have connected social media accounts. You can display posts from your social media profiles. You can automatically push website content to your favorite social platforms and to all your followers. And man, I just love Squarespace so much. Squarespace empowers people with creative ideas to succeed. And if you want 10% off your first website or domain, go to www.squarespace.com slash Will Carmack or just the top link in the description below. That works too. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you go make some explosions. Um, Thanks for sponsoring the video Squarespace and where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and it got really hot in here. I'm sweating and I'm over it. Bye.